Hi, I'm Pastor Roger Brown. God has gifted me the pleasure to pastor a dynamic, spirit-filled church called Life Changers Church International right here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. I believe God will use this sermon to impact your life and bring His greatness out of you. Man, I hope you get something out of this that will change your life. God bless you. Your time is very important, so I'm going to get right to the message. Have a wonderful day. Everybody here has a calling on your life. Man, I feel it tonight. Everyone here has battles that you're fighting and battles that you're going through, and God's calling the mighty warriors today. Just sit here and just sit in this. It's thick today. It's thick. Sit in it. Just begin to breathe it in. Father, begin to move in this place today, tonight, Lord. Move in this place tonight, Lord. Lord, touch the hearts and the minds, God. God, remind them of who they are. God, remind them of who they are. today. Raise your hands today. Come on. God has a message for you guys tonight. If I can be honest, I don't have a full message ready. I just have a word for you. Lodger and Church International is getting ready to break ground. I want you to look at me in the eyes. Lodger and Church International is getting ready to expand territory. Life Changers Church International is getting ready to get bigger. And when I say get bigger, that means that devil's going to start fighting. So God gave me a word to you tonight. And so there's a fight coming, but we got to get ready. Because anytime you expand, there's a fight. So I'm talking to the warriors tonight. I'm talking to those who have been through the things that still survived. I'm talking to the people who know it. Who know what it is, to, it's hard sometimes, but you still push through, and you still put your train to the test, and you still get up, and you wake up every day. You put your pants on every day. You put your shirt on every day the same way, but God wants me to tell you right now that there's, a, there's an expansion. Amen? All right.
what better way to talk about warriors than to talk about Gideon? Can I get my picture up there, please? I want you guys to look at this picture real hard. Every time you look yourself in the mirror, I want you to picture this picture in your mind. Sometimes it's easy to look in the mirror and not see somebody that we want to see. That's life. That's the way it goes. But the good thing about it is that, that Jesus gave us a way to say, okay, I am more than a conqueror. So we can look ourselves in the, in the face and say, you know what? You're just a body. You're just a body. The real man's inside. All right? So I want to go to Judges chapter 6, verse number 11. If you have that, you can look it up in your Bibles or on your smartphones. What do you have? I have my iPad, so whatever you guys want to do. Judges chapter 6, verse number 11 through 16. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash and the Abizurite. While his son Gideon thrashed wheat in the wine press, in order to hide it from the Mennonites, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, "The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor." Gideon said to him, "O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites." Then the Lord turned to him and said, I like this part, go in this might of yours. God's already looking at something, calling him might, mighty. Isn't it funny, sometimes we can ask questions and wonder, why did you call me, or what am I, <laughs> what am I doing here? And God's already saying, you mighty man of valor, take that might of yours, and you go conquer some stuff. I want you guys to uh, just begin to think about that. Because what does the devil come to do to us? Steal, kill, and destroy. So sometimes it's easy to go through temptations in our life, and it's easy to get caught up in, man, I'm always losing, or it feels like I'm always losing. It feels like I'm always, you know, down. But the thing about it is, you got to reach way down past the heart into your guts okay you gotta learn you know it's not fun not you know when it feels like you're just going through these things it's not fun all of us can put on faces and say oh, I'm doing all right but deep down we're like where am I but I, w I want to speak this and encourage you guys that God has called us to have to have a warrior mentality. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities of peace and powers of darkness, right? I want you guys to be reminded that Gideon, he's hiding. Who's ever hid before? I've hid before. Now I'll be I'll be honest with you. Has anybody ever caught themselves where you know you're called? You know God's called you to do great things. You know God's called you to begin to preach and begin to speak and begin to sing or begin to teach or begin to lead people or be prayer warriors. The list is unlimited. God has so many positions. And you find yourself like I don't want 
I don't feel like I want to do this because I feel like I'm not good enough. Or, God, why am I doing this? It's going to be easier just to run away and hide than it is for me to keep failing. Or is it just me that feels that way sometimes? I'm being honest with you guys. I'm not here to hide anything from you. All right. Okay, where was I? Okay. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the might of yours, and ye shall save Israel, Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Has God not sent you? So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Lord, begin to move in this place tonight. I ask that you begin to open the minds and the hearts of the people here today. God, I ask that you begin to reach down and begin to instill inside them this mentality that you placed in my heart. God, I ask that you begin to give them the wisdom and the, and the guidance, the light, the peace. God, begin to give them the faith to stand up strong. God, I ask that you make warriors out of Black Church, church International, that we can begin to take this church to the next level. And God, that we can begin to move in, under your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so I, I was really, really praying about this, and I had no idea what God wanted me to preach about. And so I started praying about it, and God, it's like God spoke to me, and he was, he was like, Latrina's church is going to a whole new level. And don't take this the wrong way when I say this, okay? Latrina's church in Nashville has been blessed, really, really blessed. And sometimes I think when we get in that blessed season, we get complacent sometimes. And we've, we get to the point to where we're always, always getting blessed, so we expect it and expect it and expect it. And then, boom, we get sideswiped. So the purpose of, the, of this message tonight is to, to tell you guys that we've got to remember who we are. God's called us to be warriors and especially with Lachlan Church International, when we start getting bigger, when we start expanding, when we start move, because I don't know what new territory means. I just know God said it. I don't know where that is. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. But why question God when he knows everything? Right? So when God says it, he's like, okay. All right, God. We're expanding territory. And then he says, you need to get ready. So what I'm here to tell you guys is when there's another level, there's a whole new devil. And every time you get to a higher level, things get harder. So as, as the core, as people of Last Year Church International, we've got to start praying for the pastors. We've got to start praying for the people, not the not only the people here, but the people in the future. Amen. You got to be praying for seats to be filled. Just start calling it out. Pray for these seats, Father. Whoever sits in these seats, God, let them be blessed and let them bring many blessings to the last year in church international. You don't have to st be stuck in the now. You don't have to be stuck right now what you see. God wants you to see further. He wants you to see the faith. He wants to see your faith. What was Abraham? He called things out they like they weren't, but they were, you know. He called them out. He didn't see them, but he says, God, I'm believing that you're going to do this. So let's have the faith of Abraham and say, God, I believe you're going to fill these seats. I believe that you're going to begin to bring new things to Life Change Church, Life Change Church International. Sorry. That was a long word, but I love saying it. I get tongue twisted. So, I want to remind you guys that you are called to be so much more. You're called to go further. You're called to achieve more. You're called to go way beyond what we see in our mind, okay? I want you guys to understand that God loves you, okay? I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, 
maybe I'm talking to myself. Maybe I'm talking to everybody. Maybe I'm talking to people who aren't here, but people who are out there. I want you guys to understand that the calling that's on your life is so, so has so much value. It has so much purpose. It's so important because sometimes we don't see the value of our own calling. So when you wake up every day, you get in your car, you know the car is going to get you a place, get you to a place. But when we get down on our knees and we start activating that calling, do we have faith in that calling to get us to where we need to go? Sometimes it's, I can tell you that there's some days where I didn't do that. I didn't say, okay, God, I know you're going to take me here. I know that you're going to lead me here. There's some days I ask God, how? How are you going to do this? How is this going to open up? How is this going to get any better? <laughs> Sometimes I'm a wine bag. How is this going to even be better? But, you know, God, God says, you and your might and yours, your might. You get your might up, and you go conquer things. I know I'm not jumping around and screaming. I know, but <laughs> I want... I really, I really feel this, guys. I really feel that we got to understand that we got to pray for the pastors. We got to pray for the calling. We got to pray for the people. Because this is what this is what I see, and I think I kind of expect for the church too. Is when the devil comes against the pastors, they shouldn't be left there, defenseless, right? So as, as the warriors of Life Church Church International, we should be making a circle around the pastors. So when the devil tries to come in, there's no way. But I want you guys to understand that I, I love every single one of you. Every single one of you. I know the pastors love every single one of you. But we got to start getting ready we gotta start praying for the pastors we gotta start digging ditches for revival we just we gotta start picking up our cross following christ we gotta stop being complacent we gotta stop sitting down expecting oh this is how it's been for the last year so i'm expecting this to happen the same way we got to reach down like i said reach down way deep and just remind ourselves, I can do this. I am a conqueror. I'm a winner. I can get through this. I know, God, you called me for so much more. Can you go to Judges chapter 7, verse number 13? All right, guys. How many knows that we are a threat to hell? Amen. Especially if we're thinking of as one mind, we are a we're a threat to hell. And l let me just tell you this: you might wake up and know the calling in your life, but do you really know? Do you wake up and know that hell is shaking every time you open your eyes? Do you know that every time that you wake up and say, I am a believer, I am a conqueror, when you have just that positive attitude that you know who you are, because confidence carries you a long ways. That's why I want, I want to read this. And when Gideon had come, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I have had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Median. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned, and the tent collapsed. Then his companion answered and said, this is nothing else but the sword, sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was when Gideon heard the, 
the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into our hands. Then he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. So these men were soldiers of Midian, Midian, and God told Gideon, he said, they're ready for you to attack them. I'm giving you this, but if you're afraid, sneak down and listen to what they're saying. Sometimes when you get, when you start, let's, let's say it this way. Sometimes when we're scared sometimes, and when God tells us to do something, and we're like, I don't know, this is, this is a big jump. I don't know, God, this is, this is just big, you know, especially attacking the whole entire army. I have 120,000 people with 300 men. Now that's, let me just tell you one thing. The reason why God did that is because he didn't want man to have the glory. He wanted them to know that God, only God could do this. So with 300 men, he told Gideon, and he said, you take one of your servants, you go down and you listen to him. And that interpretation of the dream was by another Midian soldier. So after that, he worshiped God because God said, I'm giving you the Midian, Midians to you. Sorry, I keep saying Midian. <laughs> and this right here tells me so much because when the devil has just ran us over or begin to just tumble us around or just throw us around like he owns us, you know, or begins to just tear, feels like he's tearing us apart. I don't know if, am I feeling, am I talking like too graphic? <laughs> I'm just telling you that's what happens is the devil don't play clean, okay? He don't play clean. We got to stand up. We got to stand up because when it comes down to it, when we come down ready to expand and God's expanding everything and he's growing La Trinity Church, La Trinity Church International, it comes to our responsibility to say, okay, we've got to expand. So every demonic spirit around here, you've got to leave in the name of Jesus. Start doing, that's how we take ground. You don't take ground with swords. You don't, take, don't go hitting people with swords. Okay? Don't go hitting people with swords. You got to look at the devil in the eyes and say, this is mine. God has given this to me. I am taking this today. Okay? I want you guys to understand that the devil is, he's afraid of your confidence. Because I'll just tell you right now, me and my wife, we've been through some stuff. You know, and there's some stuff that we've been through that any other couple would probably divorced over because it was hard stuff. Not marriage wise, it was hard stuff together. We fought together. And the thing about it is, it felt like we walked into hell holding hands and we came out holding hands. You know why? Because we had a warrior mentality that when it feels like you're knocked down and you can't get back up, you got to reach down into your guts and get yourself back up because failure is not an option. We don't fail. We got to keep going, keep pushing, keep accomplishing, and being successful through Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you right now, the fire service has really taught me a lot of life lessons. It really has. And I want you guys to understand that um, in the fire service that You don't just give up. You don't just quit. You can't just stop. You can't just say, okay, it's too hot, or okay, I'm just, I'm not feeling it. You can't do that. You got to reach way down and say, okay, I've trained for this for the last six years for this day. You got to reach down into the knowledge you've learned, into the physical abilities you've learned, to the mental preparedness that you've prepared for the last six years or last year or last whatever 
So inside of our lives right now, every day might just be one of those just put days, easy days, but it's going to come at a time where there's a day that you've trained for the last however long, and you're going to be put to the test. And if you haven't took it serious when it's time to train or haven't took it serious when it's time to start reading and praying or you haven't taken it serious when God said it's time to get up and quit being a baby <laughs> get up and stand up like I called you to be there's going to come a day just like when God expands this place we've got to reach deep down we've got to reach deep down and remember who we are we're called to be great we're called for great things Every one of you have a calling on your life. Just because you might not be behind the pulpit, you might not have a guitar in your hands, or you might not be a Sunday well, not, we don't have Sunday school, but it might not be a King's Kids teacher. It might not be running the cameras or the computers. That doesn't mean anything. That means that that's just one responsibility you have to worry about. Now you've got to put your focus on pr protecting the pastors because you're very, very important to this church. I want you guys to understand that. I feel that. I just feel like I need to tell you guys that you are very appreciated. You're very loved. You have a call in your lives. You're not just people who feel the pews or the chairs. You have a call in your lives, and I know the pastors appreciate you. I appreciate you. I want you guys to understand that you're not just people here. You're part of something big. Amen. And st stick around. Stick around and watch. Life Change Church International is going to expand, just like God said. And all these chairs right here will be filled, plus about another 250 or 300, okay? But I want you guys just to remember that you're loved, and God is a calling on your life. Don't give up. Keep pushing. Because you're very, you're very valuable. Your life is valuable. Your life is very valuable to the kingdom of God. You come up to the piano, please. I don't know who needs to hear this. I know I'm not preaching hard. I'm not going crazy. I'm just taking it slow. I want, you, I want you guys just to really hear what I'm saying. If Gideon can do it, you can do it. Okay? Just like that. Gideon was hiding. He was hiding from his enemies. And God took Gideon, someone who, who he probably thought he was a coward. But God said, you're a mighty man of valor. And I see value in you, and you have my favor. So why don't you get back up? Reach down, understand who you are, remind yourself of the calling and the purpose you have in your life, and you come talk to me the next day, and let's go conquer the land again. So just like in your own lives, let's move past the church, let's move to your own lives. Reach past what people have labeled you as or move past your struggles or move past the places that had stopped you from getting any further. Go to the place that has that's had you stuck for the last year or two years or three months or 10 years. You can deny it. I'll tell you right now, I have places in my life that still I have to get past. And some days it's a struggle to remind myself I am called to be a preacher of the word of Jesus Christ. Sometimes you got to remind yourself that you're not just someone that has two legs, two arms, a mind, a head, a nose, ears, a mouth. Ten toes, ten fingers. I keep going. But you're someone that God has seen value in. And he's placed time and effort chiseling the calling and chiseling the person into who you are. Chiseling the soldier, the warrior. He's taken time. And sometimes it feels like 
Like sometimes it might feel like God's given up, but He's just chiseling. He's working. He's spending time and time and time preparing you because you're a masterpiece. Your lives are so valuable. You're a masterpiece. So what kind of God puts that much time in masterpiece? The only God that is alive today. The only God that can, that can look at what looks bad and turn to good. The only God that can say, you might see yourself as, self as a tail, but I see yourself as a head. The only God that says, I look at the curse and call it blessed. The only God that says, no matter where you've been, I love you. No matter the same God that left the 99 to rescue the one. So you can't say there's no value in your life because God has called you. Whoever you are here or across the world, I want to tell you right now, stop hiding. Stop feeling ashamed. Stop feeling like you're not worth anything. Stop feeling that way because it eats you. I've been there. A lot of you heard my story. I've been there. And it's not a good place to be. But I'll tell you right now, I looked at myself in the mirror, and I said, I am called. Your failures don't define who you are. But the effort to keep moving defines the success you're going to have. To get to places that you want to be, it's not easy all the time. It's not easy. But God expects the same effort that you place into your job, the same effort you place into your family, the same effort you place into your, you know, your physical physique. I tell you right now, sometimes it's hard, it's easy to get caught up in, oh, I want to look this way or I want to feel this way. Well, this makes me feel so good doing this. But you got to look down and say, man, I got to spend more time, more time putting God first. So mighty warriors, I want to call you today. I want to call Carl Arms. I'm calling the mighty warriors. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet.